Hey John, Wilson Alexander from the Advocate. How you doing today? I'm doing fine. How about you? I'm doing all right. You know, there's been a lot of uh, talk from Coach Owens about how you know this is really the year he wants to see you and, and Ty kind of break out. What it, when you hear stuff like that from your coach? Just what does it do to your approach and your mindset, if anything? And just sort of how are you approaching this third year in the program? Well, you know, when I hear things like that, you know, it just it gives me more motivation. And I'm sure it gives Ty, Tyrion motivation as well. And, you know, it's just, um, it's, it's not too much pressure. I just feel like, you know, I've been, this my this is my upcoming third year, and I just feel like, I you know, I have to hold up to a certain standard. And, you know, it's just, I've been more focused throughout this whole, throughout my upcoming and my third year, you know, other than my last two years. So, you know, I've, I've grown. And I feel like, you know, this team that we have this year is, is about to be very successful, so. Hey, John, Jacques Doucet here from uh, WAFB in Baton Rouge. Uh, when I think about you, I always think about that run you made against Alabama, who obviously was the best team in the country last year. What, what do you remember about that run, and, and what is it going to take to, you know, have more of those kind of electric moments this year? Well, with that run, um, the O line blocked it perfectly, and the wide receivers as well. Um, you know, when the team come together and you know do their job, you know, it, you're always gonna have a successful play. You know, so when everybody do their job, you know, everything works out perfectly. Hey John, this is uh, Glenn West with LSU Country. Um, you know, just for you, I know you said you mentioned you wanted to be more focused. I guess heading into this year. Um, what were some of the off-season focuses in terms of improving your game that you wanted to see um, out of yourself? I mean, just what are some of the things you really worked on? Well, um, mainly I worked on catching and route running. Also, you know, reading coverages of the defense and the fronts, different fronts. Uh, I, you know, I, I mainly just wanted to be an all-around back. Because knowing that we was going to have, you know, the spread offense and, you know, Coach Peace was going to come in and kind of change it up just a tad bit. You know, I just want to make sure I can provide in every area, you know, as far as being a running back, running ball, running the ball, and catching the ball as well. So. Hey, John, this is Garland Gillen at Fox 8 in New Orleans. Uh, John, it, your first year, you had 39 carries total in that first year. You probably could have got that against Hallville in your senior year. How tough was it to to be patient when you're used to being the guy and you're used to getting the ball a monster times a game uh, like when you're a Destrahan and coming to LSU? How, how do you keep yourself patient uh, from being the big guy on campus at Destrahan at LSU? Well, you know, um, when I first started playing in high school, you know, I didn't just roll into high school and just started playing immediately. I had to be patient in high school as well, so, you know, I've been through being the pa being patient process, and you know, I I really sat back and I observed and I learned, and I'm I'm grateful that I came in, you know, with a championship team and me being a part of that team. It, it, you know, I took in a lot, and you know, just I now I know what a championship team looks like, and you know, I just sat back. It was amazing. You know, it was greatness at its finest. So. Hey, John, this is uh, Josh Sibley with uh, Louisiana Good Island Football. Uh, you talked about motivation earlier and, and route running and everything. Max mentioned yesterday that he has seen you working with um, Coach Falk on your route running and even uh, watching linebackers uh, uh, come down and pass blocking and everything. Uh, can you talk talk a little bit about that and, and, and um, also – how that motivates you and uh, how that has uh, set you apart maybe in the running back room with your pass pro? Well, um, Coach Fault, you know, he, he's been in the game. He was, he was in the game for a long time. And, you know, he's always giving great advice, you know, as far as pass protection and, you know, running routes. He, you know, he did that. He was that type of back. You know, he was all around back as well. And, you know, he, he, understood, he understands it. That's the advantage of having a coach that actually played football and, um, you know, that has the and actually has the feel of things. You know, um, as far as I feel like 
just from my past two years, my pass protection has got way has gotten way better, way better than the last two years. And you know, as far as my route running, you know, he and also just not Kevin Fault, you know, Coach Fault helping me out as far as with routes, but you know, the wide receiver coach as far as Coach Carter and you know Mickey Joseph, they they helping me out as well, you know. Um, but you know, Kevin Fault when he played with Tom Brady, he was mainly running routes too, you know, and catching the ball in the backfield. And, you know, just with every, every, every little thing that I do, he helps out, so. Hey, John, this is Shay Dixon with 24 7 um, Coach Peets came from an offense that had Christian McCaffrey. You're talking about being, wanting to be that all around type back. Have y'all talked about that? Or you know, has he talked about the role that Christian had and, and what he wants to see from you? Um, yes, of course. He, uh, you know, he always brings up Kristen McCaffrey, and uh, you know, he showed me a couple of clips of him running the choice route, and you know, his runs. You know, and he says I can be just like Kristen. You know, he he says I kind of remind him is is Kristen McCaffrey. So, you know, like just me. He actually showed me clips of Kristen McCaffrey as soon as he came in. And just me seeing that, I just knew it was going to be a perfect fit. And, you know, I actually love, you know, the offense that we have right now. So. Hey, John, you said, excuse me, earlier that, you know, that you've grown over the course of your career. How would you kind of compare the player and person you are now to the one who came into LSU a couple of years back? Sort of what have been the key developmental points over the last couple of years? Well, um, you know, just I would say just studying the game more, watching more film. You know, now now I feel like I watch more film and I study myself and my opponents more. Um, you know, now I feel like everything that I every little thing that I do wrong, I know now because, you know, just how much I've learned and you know, when my coach is telling me my wrong doings, it's just, you know, I just feel like that's where I've grown at the most, you know, knowing what, you know, my wrongs at and just knowing how to right my wrongs. As far as it could sometimes be a bad read or running the route the wrong way or just, you know, really it didn't anything or like just pass protection. Like, I just feel like I can notify that myself. So, you know, that that's the big key of me growing as, as a player within this year. Hey, John, you mentioned Kevin Falk a while ago. Uh, obviously, Tyree is wearing that number three, and those two guys are interacting every day and everything. It seems like it's important for Tyree to live up to the, the reputation of that number. What's their relationship like, and what's, what's Tyree want to accomplish this year, you think? Well, you know, um, the relationship between him and Coach Falk is, you know, is outstanding. You know, he actually, Tyrion has so much respect, and he's a very respectful young man. He asked Kevin Falk, Coach Falk, if he can wear number three before he actually came to LSU. So, um, you know, it's just, you know, me and Tyrion, we are very, you know, influenced by Coach Falk, you know, just of the things he did. And, you know, of course, Tyrion, he wants to be the best and that's what brings out the you know the competition in me and him and Tyrion he has a lot of goals you know so he's locked in and, and I just can't wait for you know Tyrion to do his thing this year so yeah John uh, uh, Tiger Rag uh, Mac running Tiger Rag Magazine what was it like last year the first time you stepped on the field after having LASIK surgery I mean as far as Field vision was like a whole new world for you. Um, it actually, it actually was the LASIK surgery. It helped out so much as far as me catching the ball because you know I had LASIK surgery in my right eye. It was just in one eye, and you know that played a, a huge factor in me catching the ball. Like I couldn't see. Like I had to use my one eye when I had to catch the ball to the right. So it was just. You know, it just it helped me lock in on the ball easily. You know, sometimes when the ball will be at a certain distance, I couldn't see it and until I got the LASIK surgery. And it helped out as far as me and also as far as me, you know, going through my reads and 
you know, seeing protect, like seeing blitzes coming, it just helped a lot as far as my whole vision on the field. So, John, when did you have that surgery? Um, I had this surgery. It was right after the 2019 season. I would say it probably was in January or December, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it was around that time, though. Thank you. Thank you.